Hello. Oh, yes, you're right. This is 67. Thank you for keeping me <laughs> honest. I appreciate it. All right. Welcome to Pro No Coders Office Hours, episode number 167. I am your host, Tanya, and I am here with member Ben and Mike Kim. And we're going to get started in a moment. For, but first, I want to tell you about Pro No Coders Office Hours. We do this every day of the week, Monday through Friday, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific time, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And we've just added a new hour on Mondays at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. So six times per week, we do these office hours and we invite our members to come on our Zoom with us, which we broadcast live um, for the first hour. And they can ask us any question they want about Bubble and we will do our best to give them an answer. Now, of course, we can't promise all the answers because we don't have all of them. We wish we did, but we don't. But we do promise you won't suffer with your question alone and we get it right a lot of the time. So if you would like to join us for Pro no Coders office hours and get your Bubble questions answered, go ahead and go to pronocoders.com and sign up for a membership. And it's $99 per month. And like I said, you get six hours minimum of support every week uh, where you can come and ask us any question you want. You also get access to our private Slack and our vault, which we just launched over the weekend. Our vault is an amazing new tool for and resource for bubblers. Uh, you can go to check it out at pronocoders.com. And essentially it's a compilation of our video tutorials of us answering real live questions that bubblers have asked us. And we've cataloged it, organized it, and timestamped all of the videos. So that it's highly searchable and it's very easy to find exactly that point in the video that you need to be watching to get your answer. So go sign up at pronocoders.com. Hey Ben, how's it going? Hey, good. I was just thinking, is it almost time for a Pro No Coders Office Hours theme song? Oh, yes. I'll get right on that. <laughs> like an intro song? You, yeah, I, I think, think the, so. I the think title so. of the song should be Don't Suffer Alone, I think. So. Don't Suffer Alone. I will commission somebody to write Don't <laughs> Suffer Alone. And awesome. then, um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that one will be fun. <laughs> I, I think you prepared, like you, you did some homework in preparation for this office hours, didn't you? Well, as you know, I do really like the um, the quick wins. And I yes. knew this one wasn't going to be a quick win. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> I tried to get as prepped as possible. So it could, um, you know, there's people, lots of people with questions. So um, trying to get through them all. I, I didn't want to take up too much time. No worries. Well, let's let's get started. On a second, let's see here. You want to go ahead and share your screen? Yeah, but I have a feeling that this is going to be a um, Tonya run the screen kind of scenario. Um, but Got it. Uh, so um, I was using Integra Mac and then looking at AWS to store information. And upon a chat with you this morning, I realized that that's probably not the best way to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I have installed this um, API and it's all working and everything. Uh, and then created a data type called, uh, where is it? Do we a social or a Instagram? Oh, I'm in option sets, sorry. Um, Instagram accounts. So, and in within this, there is um, brand date. Uh, if it's an event, how many Instagram followers the account has, how many Instagram following, all this kind of data. Uh, and what I want to do is run the API across all of the Instagram accounts in our socials to gather that data for each account. Okay. So I'm not sure if I'm dreaming or if that's possible or how to go about it. So you are you are already able to run the call once and get the information that yep. you want for a particular um, yep. Instagram account? Mm -hmm. Yeah, then all we need to do is set up a recursive workflow. Um, yeah, I love them. 
I'm just thinking, I'm guessing that there's no, I'm guessing that there's no way to do it from like to send the information in via a, an endpoint. Cause I think that's probably faster, but if we have to do it through the API making API calls, we can do it with a recursive workflow, no problem. You just probably want to pick a time that is either not busy or um, it'll just take a little while to get it done because it'll. Okay. we want to separate it out by enough that it won't break. Okay. Um, and, they, there is endpoints for all the data I need. So I don't know if that helps. Um, no, it's not that it's not that their endpoint. It would be if we could get like if we could set it up to have it sent into your endpoint. Uh, um, it could be a lot faster to process like lists that way of information. But I would need Eli for that anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> Eli or or Pablo for that. So Eli and his holiday holiday posts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he making us all jealous because he's in this beautiful like location for a month. <laughs> so so beautiful. I'm so happy he's taking that time. So um, awesome. So yeah. So let's look at where do you have the API call that's working? Uh, in my plugins, just here. Okay. And okay. it's. It's uh, I've checked it and everything, and it's bringing all the information in that is there. And it's bringing it in for one account, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Let's At go least, to... though, although the it's called a bulk profile fast response, so I'm not sure if that means I can get many or just one. Gotcha. Um, let's just do one at a time. Okay. So, yeah, and then we can we can uh, you can ask in the general channel of Slack if you can optimize it from there. I was supposed to ask something the other day and I can't remember what it was. Anyway. Okay. Okay, so let's go to your backend workflows. And just create a new one. Oh, you already have it. I tried. Look, I I, I made a solid attempt. <laughs> you made a solid attempt. Okay. So let's do a new API workflow. And um, the parameter, like you can call it whatever you want, whatever makes sense. You could call it Instagram. I think you can't have spaces in there oh, okay. and probably not capital letters either. That's like one of the weirdest things about bubble is they don't, they don't tell you, like they don't, you know how they, make something red if it's wrong. <laughs> mm. They don't make the API, work, API workflow names red if you have it wrong. They just give you an issue at the top of your they screen. They should at least have a reference there, shouldn't they, if there's something I new. know. It's very strange. But I think it has to do with the fact that they often act as an endpoint, and you can't have the spaces in the endpoint or something. So um, OK, so let's add a new parameter. And what kind of information is it that you are sending in past, like what kind of parameters are you passing in through the API call that you're gonna need in this um, key? So there is um, follow account, following count. Um, I guess th those two would be the easy ones to, to check. Um, so is it like an yeah, but in go go to the API workflow plugins. Sorry, the um the, I didn't mean to say API workflow. I should have said API call the plugins oh, section. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you're passing in IG, which is a value, and that value is like a username or something. Exactly. And that's okay. held in the database. I've got that. So you can use it as a variable. Okay, got it. All right. So now we're gonna send. We're gonna have use um, two different recursive workflows for this. Mm -hmm. So go back to the workflows part. So this is going to like initiate, right? So the first thing you have to do is um, in your data things, you want to make changes to a list of things. 
and the list of things is going to be the Instagram accounts and just do a search for all of them, I guess. Oops. Okay. Now you want to click to add a new API workflow. Nope, up at the top. Oh, sorry. Yep, it's okay. And this one is um, like you're processing that list. Okay. Okay. And then the parameter is going to be um, uh, just IGs, IGS, I would guess. And then it'll be of type. Um, I guess it's of, of type text, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And is a list array. So check that. Awesome. All right. So now click to add an action. Oh, sorry. Click to add an action. In the workflow. Yep. And so now you want to do your API call. So it's probably in plugins. And do you see the call that you want? No. It, it might be if you go into plugins, I think maybe you have the wrong type selected. So go back into your plugin section. And you'll just make it instead of use as data, you'll say use as action for the uh, okay. for that gotcha. call. Yeah. And now Re uh, I don't I mean you can. I, it shouldn't make a difference, right? Perfect. So now if you go back then in the plug, like in the workflow section, mm -hmm. now when you click to add an action and go to plugins, you should find that action in the list. And then the path that you're gonna send in is gonna be IGS and then first item. And then you're, Next thing, I think you're creating a new thing in the database, right? Yeah. Okay, so create a new thing in the database and it'll be that thing that you're tracking. Sorry. Mm, is it gonna be Instagram? Account? Yeah, that's where I've got the, the information from the that I'm bringing in, so media account following. But that's not, is that what we were using to get the list? No, to get the list is um, social, the social one that we used with the option set. Mm -hmm. Go back to the first API workflow. Um, no, the, the, yeah, that one. So make changes. Yeah, so this is what we were searching to get the list of Instagram oh, accounts. The list is actually in um, the social media profiles that we set up. Okay. And then search for social media profiles. And then what you want to do is the... Uh, I'll need a constraint where it's... Instagram. No, that's okay. That's fine. The yep, that's fine. So um, list change and then constraint. So add a constraint where the Instagram is not empty. Um, well, it'd be where the um, social type is Instagram, wouldn't it? Uh huh. Uh, but instead of social type, oh yeah, okay, that would work. Yep. Yeah. Because remember, that. we've got all the links just in a link. Got it. Yep. Yeah. So only when. Oh, sorry. 
I'm just thinking if you need the only one here. No, I think that's fine. Okay, so now what you wanna do is click to add an action and you're gonna schedule the other API workflow. Um, yep, it's that one, I think. Okay. Yeah, and it'll be current date and time. Current date and time. Yep, and then the IGs that you're going to send in is going to need to be a list of texts. So you're going to say results of step one. And then you're going to say they're like the link. Or maybe it's not the link, it's the username. Yeah, it's the username, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep, okay. So now you have that. And then how often do you want to run this particular workflow? Every 24 hours. Okay, so then click to add an action and schedule the same workflow. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you'll just choose current date and time plus one day. Yep, and then go to the, um, go to the, workflow itself again? This one? Um, nope, the Instagram, yeah, the IGS thing, so. Oh, I'm sorry, you scheduled, um, you scheduled the other one. Go to step three again. Step three, yep. And change it to the one that you're currently in, the information ah, one. Okay. There you okay. go, yeah. And then go to the workflow again, the, the same one at the top there, first one, the other one, and then delete that key because you don't need a key there. Okay. All right, so that one's set. So this it will run every, we're gonna make a like temporary page with a button so you can kick it off the first time, yep. um, but this will run every 24 hours. It will get that list of social media profiles, the usernames for the Instagram. Mm -hmm. Then it will schedule the other workflow to run and drop in that list. And then it will schedule itself to run again 24 hours later. So awesome. now let's work on the second one. Mm -hmm. So you're making the step, the step one is you're going to send in the first, um, the first username from that list. And then you're going to create a new Instagram account. So let's finish step two. And you're going to enter, change any of the information that you're getting back from that API that you want to. So you probably want the followers following mm. and that stuff. So results of step one, is that right? Yep, results of step one. And then you want it's a. Uh, this is follow account. Count, yeah. Yep. Following count, count. I'm not sure. I think it is getting back a list of Instagram accounts. Okay. Um, hopefully it's just getting back one, but we'll have to test it because it looks like you're getting a list of things back from that API. Um, how do I do this one where the talent or brand name, oh, current date is current date, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, where, so the, what it's searching for, how do I associate that with a talent in the talent database? So 
So you're going to use the username. So the IG's first item. So you'll do a search for what you're looking for in the database. And then you'll constrain it with that Instagram username. Okay. So do a search for, is it? Yep. Um, talent. Constraint. Mm. No. So the talent is a user? No, the talent is like a profile. So a user can look after 30 of them if they want. Okay, so okay, so your in the Instagram that you're looking up is related to a user. So you no, can related to a talent or a brand or a event. Okay, show me. So it's a brand or a talent. But do you need to change this? Well, I don't want these results. Or oh, got it. It's just, it's, we're making a new thing. Okay, yeah. hang on a second. So Instagram talent. I need to understand better about your database. Okay. Yep. So let's go to the um, database and look at what a talent is. So this is a list of talent. And then under talent, they've all got um, their social media profiles. So, you know, this is. So does the, does the talent thing in the database, um, does it relate, does the talent thing relate to the social link? Like yeah. this? the social media profile or does the social media profile relate back to the talent thing? Well, the way um, we set it up was, um, so this is a list of, so that's all the same profile and this is, is LinkedIn, Instagram, blah, 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 blah. And it links back to the talent and uh, Okay, so the social media profile that is of type Instagram will automatically be linking back to the right talent to enter into that yes. field. Okay, so let's do it that way. So go back to the workflows. And then what we'll do is we'll do a search for social media profile where the Instagram username whatever it's, whenever you have the social profile username. Well, this is the actual profile that it goes to. Does that it's, help? It's okay. Nope. You want the username because that's what you've stored in the list that you're working from. So equals. Yep. The uh, IGS first item. Right. And then you're going to want to say first item there and you want the social, the talent profile, right? Yep. There you go. Cool. So would I, what if it's not a talent profile, but it's a brand profile? Would I just do the same, essentially the same thing? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so. So, I mean, you can even copy and paste that, um, that expression if you want. You have to click on it, like click, uh, right click on it. There you go. And then just change it at the, the end to the, um, the brand profile. There you go. Cool. Yep. Um, and then this would be. Am I doing wouldn't, this wouldn't I think that would be results of step one? Ah, uh, would be. Yep. Sorry. That's okay. Cool. 
Cool. Looks good. Awesome. All right. So now we need to add some um, conditions to the step one and step two. And the condition is going to be very simple to set up. It's going to be only when the IGS count is greater than zero. Nope, not that one. Oh, sorry. Stay where you were. Yep, step one and step two. Okay. Yep. So only when IGS count is greater than zero. And then the same on step two. Yep. And then now you want to um, schedule the same workflow. So the second workflow that the one that you're on now, you want to schedule that workflow to run again. Okay. So is that a custom event? Schedule mm -hmm. APL workflow? Yep, it is. And mm -hmm. then will be the info one. And then it'll be current date and time. And then you're going to want to add like maybe a second or two. Five to be safe. But I mean, if you're talking about having thousands of these. Yeah. Then you're talking about like, you know, 5,000 seconds is way too long. OK. But, well, I mean, I guess it's not. 5,000 seconds divided by 60 gives you, what, 83 minutes? That's not too bad. No. But how many thousands of these are you going to have? How long is a piece of string? Um, <laughs> yeah, I won't know until kind of set up. At, at the moment, it'll be to be like a couple of hundred. A couple hundred? Okay. So like, yeah, we'll definitely want to, we will want to optimize this after you get where it's like too long. So yeah. Um, okay, so then uh, the IGS is going to be IGS, and then you're going to subtract the first item from the list. So you do that with minus item, and then IGS first item, and then only when IGS count is greater than zero. So the count greater than zero is we're just saying that as long as something is left in that list, then we want to continue running this workflow over and over. But since you're subtracting an item from the list every time it runs, eventually it will run out of things on the list. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. And that's it. That should work. Okay. So, so now we just have to schedule it to run. Um, one time so you can just like like at a certain time so you just need like a temporary page or you can just add a temporary button to a page that you already have okay this is such a weird thing to have to do the button it seems strange to me i know i think i saw somebody do some magic from the like log se section but I, don't, I haven't tried to like i haven't no i don't know who it was I can't remember. It's a very like very faint memory, but it does seem weird that you can't just like go into somewhere and schedule it to run without having to create an interface for it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably exists and I just didn't, don't know about it. Like I didn't know, and even Eli didn't know if you're in the live section. Like if you go and change from development to live, if you need to revert your live to a previous like deployed version, you mm. just switch it from development to live and then go in the history and change it from there. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's so much easier. And like, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> so learn new things all the time. Okay, so yeah, so when you uh, click the let's go button, you're going to go ahead and schedule the API workflow. On a list? Nope, not, not on a list, just the workflow. So the reason we're not doing it on a list is because you, you've suggested there's going to be like more than 100 items. Yes. And for that, we really want to do a recursive workflow. Okay. So um, API workflow and then we're going to do the information one because that's the first one. 
Yeah. And then the scheduled date will be current date. And we're actually, when do you want it to run? I would recommend running it like midnight. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you could say um, a scheduled date would be current date and time plus one day rounded down to date. Current date and time. Plus one day. Plus one day. Yeah. And then rounded down to date. And that will be midnight tomorrow. Rounded down to date. Yep. So that'll happen at, at your midnight tonight. Gotcha. Yeah. And then, um, yep. And if you just want to go ahead and click that button, so preview and click. And now you can go into your editor, delete that button. <laughs> and then cool. you can go into your logs. Uh, at the bottom. Setting, uh, logs, sorry, yep. Yep, and then go to the scheduler and show, click show. And you have the Instagram profile information is scheduled to run at midnight tonight right because it's already december 1st where you are yes correct yeah okay cool yep so it only needs that one it doesn't need both of them no because that one schedules the other one to run remember oh. it sends the list into the other one that's right okay cool awesome well that just took out a whole bunch of aws pain and integra map pain for me so thank you you're welcome. I would call that what 35 minutes. I would call that a quick win compared really? comparatively. Yeah, comparatively. Yeah, I would. I know, it was 26 my... minutes. 26 hey. minutes. Okay. Yeah. So that's not bad. It's good. Normally my quick wins are like four and a half minutes, though. I know, but it's okay. <laughs> I love I love recursive workflows. They're so much fun. I think that there's like I I could stand to learn a bit more about how to like do plugins and things where you can like make the call and get the, all of the information and just process it really fast using JavaScript yeah. or something. But like, I know that this works. And if you separate your calls um, by enough, then you're, you're probably pretty safe making that. So, um, cause you are making quite a few calls if you if you're sending in like a list of a thousand or something so yeah definitely um so able to do two hundred thousand a day which is that's amazing. awesome uh, so not bad yeah um, so yeah cool. and i mean if you wanted to you could you could go back to test it like right now you could just schedule it right now and see if it's working so is there someone else waiting though no it's just no. you just yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, Chris. Yeah, we had somebody who came in and then left before I got a chance to greet them. Um, maybe you know what we should do, Kim. <laughs> when you notice yeah. a new participant, can you greet them in a private message, like in a direct message in the chat? <laughs> just let oh, them yeah. know that, <laughs> that we see them. I do see them. I'm just like, I'm so focused on helping the person. So, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I recognize the name, so I'll reach out to him and make sure that he knows we weren't we weren't ignoring him. Awesome, what else you got for me? Um, well, did you want to check that one now? Uh, yeah, we can do that, sure. Okay, do that. So back into the backend workflows? Um, nope, you just need to make, uh, go go into your logs again into the scheduler and then I would just cancel that yep cancel that and then just make that button again and schedule it for like right now current date and time instead of scheduling it for midnight you're gonna make a giant button <laughs> a big giant button yeah <laughs> that'll work Oh, that just looks ridiculous. There you go. 
much for that. Okay, cool. Um, cool, and then we go to custom and then we schedule an API workflow. Mm -hmm. And then we do this one and then we do current date and time. Mm -hmm. And that's all. That's it. Okay. And then go to your database real quick. And yep. let's just look at your data for all of those, um, the things that were the Instagram accounts. Yep. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, just preview and click that button and then we'll come back here and, and see if it's working. Cool, 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 cool. Done. Yep. Refresh. Um, actually, I would just click on integrations and then click back on Instagram accounts. Looks like you got one. I did. I don't know why it, the number's one though. That's weird. Yeah, I think this is um, this is what I was talking about before. So it's returning how many things. So I don't think you need count at the end of it. So go into, um, into logs and show again and click cancel and then show again, because sometimes it happens so fast. Okay, so that should hopefully run its course and finish. Now let's go back into the backend workflows. So it's telling you like how many in the create a new Instagram account, step two. Yep. And then, so when you, when you're saying count, count, you just need count. You don't need this second count. Okay. So just click in there and, and backspace and then click out of there. Nope. No, Instagram. No, no, I think you did that wrong. So clear clear out Instagram followers, just clear that expression. Yeah, so you want results. So just right click and clear. Yep, results of step one. Uh, followers, follower count. And then don't do anything else is it reading out okay so results of step one so go to results of step one so backspace yeah so when you're backspacing so click where it says click it it's so weird i don't know why bubble does it this way but if you just backspace once Okay, and then backspace again. And then click right where your mouse or <laughs> right where my mouse is. Why can't you see my mouse? Um, <laughs> click on the gray part <laughs> around the input. Do you know what I mean? Results of step ones. Okay, so now click more and first item. And now do the count one, the Instagram follower count. Yeah, there. Okay, and click outside of it. There you go. That's what you're looking for. And you just need to do that for the rest of them. So you need to say, because it's sending, even though, even though you only sent in one Instagram username, it's sending you, sending it back in the form of a list. Right. So the list only has one, but Bubble thinks it's a list. So you have to specify that it's the first item. Gotcha. Okay. Step one, first item. Media. Media account. And that's fine. Uh, this one needs to be redone. Step one, first item. 
little hydrogen between the EOs. And that should work, yeah? Yep. Now what you'll do is go to the, yep, go to the database and delete what you retrieved already. So just delete those two and then preview and click the button again. Preview and click the button again. Mm hmm The big woohoo button. Woohoo. Woohoo. <laughs> Aren't we all? Your browser just said waiting for bubble. It's like, aren't we all? <laughs> okay, pressed. That's done. Okay, so now let's go watch the database. I love this part. That better? Look at that. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Yes. And it'll be so much faster when Eli optimizes so that like you can actually get the list. All of, of all of them back at once and parse it. Hopefully we can we can do that. We'll see. Brand talent. And there's the date. So now I can create a graph out of the date and how many these followers are and do all that kind of wonderful stuff. Yep. It's all about data. Awesome. Yay. I'm so excited about that. That's amazing. <laughs> That was really cool. Huh? You just saved me like a month of pulling my hair out over AWS, I think. Um, oh, come on. That has to be worth $99 then. What do you think? Oh, that's worth way more than $99. <laughs> yeah. So if I go into social media profiles, is, are they the only two Instagrams I have? Instagram and Instagram. Yep. Perfect. Sweet. Okay, so the question is now, how do I change it back to run at midnight? Okay, yeah, so you just go to the, um, I would, just, uh, I mean, you don't even have to delete what you just created. You can if you want. Um, go to the logs in the scheduler and cancel the one that's going to run 24 hours from now. That one? Yeah. Yep, that one, cancel that. And then go to um, the where that button is. Yeah, so the workflow on that button, the woohoo button. I can't find it, I'm gonna skip it this way. That's how, that's how I do it. Okay, so then um, click on that step one and you're just gonna schedule it for current date and time plus one day and round it down to date, and then it'll be scheduled to run at midnight tonight. Is that right, day, date? Uh, no, date, yep, perfect. Yep, and then one other thing I noticed you do is you click all the way out of the expression builder and then you go back in and you don't have to do that. It would save you time not to do that. So the problem I'm having is normally, you used to be able to just click on that and it would come up, but now I have to do this. Uh, yeah, that's a bug. It's a UI bug uh -huh. and, and Bubble needs to fix it. I think we're all waiting for someone else to report it. Oh, uh, okay. Because it's driving me crazy. I think um, um, if someone wanted to report it, there's something in the vault about how to do that, isn't there? Oh, yes, in the vault, I have a video on how to submit a bug report because it's an arduous process, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, and it's one I have not taken up today because I'm, I'm like scatterbrained today. It's so funny. I have so many things on my list of things to do that feel like they're like absolute priorities. <laughs> And really the only absolute priority is that I, I meet my obligations with my calendar, like when I have a meeting, but I do have other things that I need to get done. And it's like, I kept starting on one thing and I would get a message from someone and be like, what? And it's like, my head's all over the place. It's okay. It will calm down. We're just having an exciting time with our launch. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. But what I was saying before is when you click, like when you... When you said current date and time, and then you added the day, 
you clicked out of it so that it turned blue before you added the rounded down to date, but you didn't have to do that. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I was just being, I okay. don't know why, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, I, I just wanted to make sure because it's, I, learning that trick of how many times to press backspace mm. to get what I was looking for, like that was really tricky at first when I was in bubble. There's so many little things like that that can save you days in a build. Yep. Um, if you do them all, like properly setting up. Um, well, you did the biggest one. You upgraded your machine. How much faster is Bubble now? <laughs> oh, Nine from day, a 2012 right? iMac to this. Yeah, no, it's insane. <laughs> and then I stupidly deleted my whole app and rebuilt it in the new responsive engine. Um, I I know that that was like, I don't know, Ben. I think that was smart. It took me about a tenth of the time to build it, I think, even just still learning it. Yeah. I think I think that was really smart, honestly. Um, my advice to anybody who's wa watching and wondering about whether or not you should like move your app over into the new responsive engine, the answer is it depends. The one thing I don't recommend doing is clicking the convert button and converting right. something that you have in the old responsive engine into the new one. If you're gonna build in the new responsive editor, then just start with a new page. Or if you wanna add a section to your page that's new responsive, you can use a reusable using the new responsive and then use that reusable in an old responsive editor page but I would not recommend the converting that doesn't seem to be as easy as just rebuilding the page something I've seen people do which is interesting and I, I have tried it and it does work is just opening a new app and then keeping the old app opening and copying things across and then converting them yourself like little bits at a time mm -hmm. okay does that sound ridiculous to you um I mean, I, it depends. If you're if you're gonna be like copying a whole app over, like you can also, I'm sure you did this. I'm you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure that as you were rebuilding it, you refactored at the same time. Oh like, yeah. Yeah, like you you changed how you did things and improved things because you've learned a lot since you started, right? So like, yeah. I think if I was gonna take the time to convert my app over to the, like rebuild it in the responsive engine, I'd probably wanna be really thoughtful, not probably, I'd wanna be really thoughtful and probably scope the whole thing out fresh, right? Because yeah. the the trouble with with building on the app like in Bubble, you can generally build the MVP of an app very, very quickly, right? The mm. reason you can do the MVP very, very quickly and things slow down after that is because you have the blank slate, right? So none of the decisions you make have to retroactively fit into decisions you made prior, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you're when you go to add on to an app, every time you go to change a feature or add a new feature, you have to make it backwards compatible with what's already there. And that takes a lot of time sometimes. So mm -hmm. I don't think I would copy and paste an old app into the new responsive engine, just because you probably know a lot more now about your app than you did when you started. So you can make better decisions. For your app and reduce the tech people, I think the only people really doing that are the people that are kind of terrified of the new responsive engine but it, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not going to buy it like it is it is so much simpler once you have that kind of that click moment where you get it you you've got it and you can just go full speed yeah it's yeah I agree I think it's so so much faster and so much more pleasant to work with and so much easier to get your desired result out of it um, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Um, so with this, do I, should I now run this from that button and then delete the button? Yep. And then we'll be I've scheduled to run tonight. Yep. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Yeah.
how exciting. I think I'm gonna, this app is gonna have about a million recursive workflows now. Recursive workflows are awesome. Um, the one thing I do recommend with your recursive workflows is then like tomorrow morning when you wake up, go back in to your logs and look at how the recursive workflow impacted your capacity. Okay. Because you'll want to spread it out enough that it's like, I tend to like those sorts of things. I don't want it going above probably like 10%. Okay. Right. Like you want to um, keep it, you want to keep it lightweight so that it never like times out and you don't get throttled essentially. Yeah. So can I delete this button now? Is that? Fine? Yep. You can delete the button. I mean, if you ever need it again in the future, it's really fast. Yeah. So. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and now should I check the logs or anything else you think I should do? Yep, so you have cancel. How did it schedule twice? Did I do it already and then I did it again? Oh, you must have clicked the button, yeah, twice. Yeah. So it doesn't matter, you can cancel one of those. It doesn't matter which one. Cool. Yeah, awesome. so now you have, yeah, one scheduled. Perfect. Cool beans, awesome, thank you so much. You're so welcome. We're going to wrap up the office hours portion of office hours and move into the after hours section of office hours. That is a members only event. That means you can't watch it from YouTube or Facebook. But if you would like to join the fun, you can join ProNoCoders at ProNoCoders.com. Select office hours. It's $99 per month. You can come on to any and all of our sessions that we have. We have six per week and you can get your uh, bubble questions answered quickly. Uh, we will be back here in, let's see, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific time for Office Hours episode number 168. I hope you will join us, and I'll see you then.